Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here, and today we're going back in time to the 1930s in The Phantom, the card game. In this game, one or two players playing as The Phantom or Diana are going to be going through a story. The game comes with three different stories you can play, and uh, you are going to have your own deck, you are going to be playing cards, building up your forces, building up your abilities, and dealing with various threats, following a story from this numbered, organized deck of cards from which you'll be pulling cards and dealing with what's happening. We're going to go ahead and cut to the table. I'm going to show you more or less how the game works. We'll come on back. I'll tell you what I think of it. So here I'm going to be showing you the game breakdown. Uh, the game can be played with two players, uh, and they can pick whichever one of these two they want, or solitaire. I'm going to play solitaire right now with just the phantom here. And then you have three stories included. You can play Story of the Devil, Diana in the Jungle Patrol, or Year One. Here we have this one, Diana in the Jungle Patrol, and the cards are stacked numerically and organized all the way from the top to the bottom there. Then you've got an injury deck, which you'll shuffle up and put right there. You've got your player deck, which will go right here. And then you are ready to begin. So to commence the game, we take the top card, we reveal it, and we read it, all right? So the card says, The Bet. Tired of hearing Carl complaining that women can't do anything better than men, you decide to prove him wrong. You challenge him to a bet that you would become a soldier before he would. The bet is on. Then it gives you some instruction. Place rifle 2-3 on the discard pile. Then when they give you two numbers like that, then that means uh, one for each player. So obviously I only need one of these. That'll be my discard pile. The other one we can remove since I'm playing solitaire. Then it says place patrol uniform in your play area for free. And this is patrol uniform. So I'll put my play area over here and I'll discard the other one. Then it says shuffle cards 6 through 10 to create the destiny deck. And that's these here. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We shuffle these and I'll make the destiny deck. Then it says place Diana in the Jungle Patrol part 1 as the active mission. So the active mission is this one here and it has two sides. I can play on easy normal or I can play on heroic slash mythic. So either side we will play on normal. Then once this is done, I've read everything on it, I can get rid of that too. So this is our active mission here. And the active mission says, if you need to reveal a destiny card and there are no cards in the destiny deck, you immediately lose the game. If there are four or more test cards in the resolved pile, immediately read two. So this, two. All right, fine. So let's go ahead and talk about our breakdown here for the turn, the phases. So there's a recovery phase, destiny phase, preparation, adventure, fate, and then cleanup phase. During the recovery phase, I can either heal all my wounds, which would come out of this deck, or I can ready all of my cards. If they are exhausted, I could ready them. During the very first one, obviously, I have nothing to do. Then we do the destiny phase, in which I reveal a card from the destiny deck, add it to the destiny row. And then I will trigger all the cards in the destiny row. So this first one here has a bunch of symbols, right there, as you can see. And it's a test. It's theoretical exams. And it tells you what you need to do. So... There's a symbol shown, which is a payment, then a card check symbol. The card check symbol is a fairly common thing in the game in which you reveal a card from here and check the symbols on it. And then it says that if I get any of those crossed swords symbols, I can discard this card here. You'll have to figure out, you know, the little symbology in the, from the uh, rule book. They do show you basically an iconography breakdown. All right, so I did that. Nothing else I need to do right now. We can go to the next one, which is preparation phase. Draw cards until you are at your hand limit. Hand limit in this game is three. So I would draw. I shuffle up this deck, which I might as well shuffle up again. And then I draw three cards from it. And these are the cards in my hand. Every card in your hand can do one of two things, basically. You can play it by paying the cost here on this side, or you could discard it and take these icons here on this side. The different iconography and the different tokens are here in this little bag, which I'm going to spill out onto that spot right there. And then they'll do something. There'll be an action or an item or an ally, what have you. I already began with patrol uniform here in play that says I can exhaust this. 
Choose any card with keyword Jungle Patrol in your discard pile. Put it into your hand. All right. So the very first thing I should do is a very obvious thing is exhaust this and take this card that says Jungle Patrol at the bottom in very, very tiny writing right there. Put it in my hand. All right. And then I can do something with all these. To pay for, say, this rifle, it takes two skulls and two gems. The gems are wild. The gems can be anything. So right now, even if I discarded all three of these cards, that's still not enough to pay for this rifle. I would just save the tokens, and I can save up to six here. I could play the uh, this Colt 45, by the way. It takes three skulls. Can't play that either. So I could play one of these message from the jungle drums it gives me the cross swords called a good mark i think and it can be paid for with anything fine so i'm going to discard one of these take the token i'm going to play the other one for that token um or rather rather i'm going to take that back i'm going to discard both of these really i know i'm not going to play them so i might as well discard them there we go play that then I'm going to pay this one to activate this test. It says I do a card check. So I take this card um, and I flip it. There's a gem on there. The gems are anything. I think that they count for this symbol. So I did indeed get that. So this is now discarded in the resolved pile. All right. And now... Um, this one here lets me trash it and peek at the top card of any deck, put it back on top, and take any one token. I don't need to do that. That's it for the end of my turn. Then we do the fate phase in which enemies here would attack me. There aren't any right now. And the cleanup phase where I discard cards from my hand and return access resource tokens. I may discard, I believe. And then we go to the beginning of the next phase in which I do the recovery phase. Like I said, I recover this. Destiny. Okay, there's another test, an obstacle course. I have to discard three cards and get rid of this one. So this turn is going to be very simple. One, two, three. I am going to do that to take a jungle patrol card into back into my hand. And then I am going to discard uh, one, two, three cards. Get rid of that one. This one here, I can play any, pay anything for that. So I'll put a campfire into play, which basically lets me discard this card to ready another card. All right? Uh, that's it. This continues with, again, once you then go through the four tests here that they want me to do for more resolved, yeah. Um, then I read the second part, which is going to say, basic training is done. Now I need to find some characters, shuffle them in here. Uh, get some new cards possibly into my deck and continue doing this drawing three cards generally discarding most of them just to have enough tokens to then be able to play some of them out that's basically what's going on I should talk about damage because once we go into the next area here there will be some characters that are going to deal me damage so let me just grab some of these and find out what they, uh, you know, show you what they do. So let me, let me just grab some traffic jams and things. Okay, here we go. So here's a uh, character. Let me find, yeah, this is a, an easier explanation. That character there. Lou is an enemy, is human, has four hearts right there. If I do four damage to Lou, I discard him and put him in the resolved pile. In order to do that, I need to do uh, one of these base actions, which is an attack. To attack, I have to discard a skull and initiate combat. I can also, three of anything can become one skull, by the way. So I discard that. I then check down here where it says initiate combat. I get one strength already, and then I do a card check and count the number of skulls. There's none. So I have one base attack. That means I can spread among the bad guys one attack. He's going to take four, like I said. Once we get down to the fate phase... Every enemy out here is going to attack me. To do that, I draw a card and I put it in my, you know, in an area that has my wounds. So this one, for example, says leg injury. It says your maximum has hand size is reduced by one while leg injury is in play. So I'm going to be drawing two cards. If you have two leg injury cards in play at the same time, you are knocked out. 
if I have, so, and there's, you know, a few of these flesh wound, just as if I have three injuries total, any kind, I'm knocked out. Shoulder injuries, cannot activate any weapons, and two shoulder injuries knock me out. And then there's head injuries, where I cannot activate allies, and two of these knock me out. So again, at the beginning of the round, during the recovery phase, I either get rid of any of these I have, or I ready things. But I would say you're generally getting rid of these because leaving them around is simply too dangerous. If you're knocked out, game's over and you lose. So, and having just two cards for the next round is going to be pretty rough anyway. So, there you go. That's how you attack and that's how they hurt you back during this fate phase. Uh, everybody that would attack, their health doesn't matter at that point. You just draw a card. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what's happening. Uh, that was probably as comprehensive as the rule book is. So let's go ahead and go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. All right, so that is the Phantom, the card game. Um, let's break it down, shall we? We're going to start from the top with the theme and the setting. And I should probably say up front, I think this game is quite bad. It's, uh, it's very weak. It's very sloppy. It's also very indie, and I know that. I know this is a very small release, but uh, there was not a whole lot for me to enjoy here, or a lot that I feel like I can praise, okay? So I'm going to say that up front. So starting from the top, the theme and the setting. Perhaps it's better if you're a fan of the game, but there are lots of games I play which have intellectual properties attached that I do not care anything about, and I still can enjoy those games. So this is not just because it's something I'm not into or particularly familiar with. The concepts, the tropes, what's going on here feel very dated. I don't know, I mean, this comic from what I understand is still running. And yet these stories that they picked, two of the three I would say, have some topics that I would find questionable. You saw a little bit of it at the beginning there in the overview with Diana having some dude be like, you can't do things, you're a woman. There's, there's some of that, uh, and then there's a, the other story has some of that. One of them, it's very dated, very iffy. The aesthetics, very low quality tokens here. Card quality is not good. Um... The artwork is the artwork. I know that they're going for sort of, you know, and I'm assuming these are all images pulled from the comics, so it's not like this is new artwork. That's fine. It's a stylistic choice. It's not, it doesn't look particularly good, but it is what it is. But the card quality and the tokens, which are the main components in the game, are not very good quality. The replay value. I also think is very weak. There are three stories, like I said. This game feels very scripted. All the stories feel very scripted until, I would say, the last third of the game where they let you shuffle up a few cards and it sort of opens up a little bit. So replayability of those three stories, I find weak. I, It's just not... That engaging, the third time you have to deal with enraged wolves and you know exactly what's going to happen. Two rounds of wolves, then Bagshot, some guy named Bagshot, shows up and kills the wolves. And then this very specific thing happens next. I assume that that's very close to the things that happened in the comic. Great. Really, you know, nice approximation of the, the story someone I assume has nostalgia for. But this is a game. If it is on rails, it is not as fun. And this feels quite on rails a lot of the time. The game arc. Um, because of that very scripted nature, the, the game gives you very narrow wiggle room. Uh, so there's not a lot of... There's not a lot you can do. The game is in no, at no point splashy. Do you get to try outside strategies? Really crazy stuff. It just doesn't allow for that. It's very scripted. The hand size is insane. As you saw, you have three cards. Some reduce it to two cards for your round. The card costs are anywhere between one token and four. That means there are rounds in which you, actually many rounds, in which you just discard all three of your cards for that round and save up the tokens for next round. 
So you get like a real decision every couple of rounds, usually. Uh, the internal economy of those cards, of discarding for the token or building a thing, seems wonky. It doesn't seem right. This game gives you no room in which to play. You know, it's a sandbox in which they sit you in that box first. You barely fit in there, and then they pour some sand on you, and they're like, aren't you having fun yet? No, I can barely do anything in here. So that seems very tight, and like not good tight, like, oof, the decisions. No, like I can't really do anything. Is this supposed to be fun? Because I'm getting to play a card every couple of rounds, and what that card does is I can discard it to look at another card. Or like exhaust a card and get rid of it to draw a card? Wait, like something's off here. So I'm, I'm paraphrasing. That's not exactly what, what the cards do, but you understand what I'm saying. The ease of play, also not good. The rule book is quite sloppy and I would say incomplete. There's deck building in here. It's just not explained very well. There's a bunch of variants, uh, variant rules that you can choose to implement. But they run the gamut of things I think that should be just part of the game, all the way to completely pointless, unnecessary complications. Quite the spread. Uh, the game does not explain some concepts as clearly and cleanly as it should. A lot of what I've seen online, though, references the rule book. So, you know, references that it is sloppy. So, um, this isn't an outside opinion here. Though, to be fair, a lot of folks that I've seen online, because I've been working on this one for a while, weren't running into the same issues I had. So, I felt for a while there, felt like I was taking crazy pills. And I'm, I did not play this alone, by the way. I did a lot of playing it alone. But I've shown it to other people, is what I'm saying. Um, that's ease of play. Tactics, luck, and strategy is the only one I'm not giving a straight up thumbs down to here. I think there are some choices, what to keep, what to discard, and by keep I mean you are shorting yourself a resource this round and drawing one fewer card next round. This is not the only game we've seen this in. We've seen this in other card games like say Marvel Champions, the card game is a similar game in concept to this, but with a lot of design space, a lot more options available to you, and in that game, carrying over a card is also not the best usage of your hand. You want to be able to draw back up. Uh, your hand is not three cards, and the economy of the cards is certainly... You can play a card every round in that game. Guaranteed. You That's not true in this one. Um, but there are some choices. What to keep, what to discard, which bad things to deal with. Yeah, there's some things you can do when it's your turn. I want to exhaust this card to draw a card. Now I can discard that to get a skull. I'm going to attack. Okay, I'll spread these wounds out like this. These two, I'll discard these two for the tokens. Oh, look, I have three tokens. I'll trade them in for a skull and attack again. That's a typical turn in this game. So there's some things to do. The card check system, where you flip over a card and see what you got, I don't like. I think it's tons of luck. It's not like there's a lot of manipulation of the top of your deck anyway. Some things let you look at it, but so what? If I need to attack, I need to attack. How punishing the wounds are in this game is insane. Um, there are very few reasons why you should not, if you have any wounds at all, not heal. That is likely going to kill you, even if you have the least dangerous one, which is the uh, just the flesh wound. If you have the flesh wound and you still choose to ready your cards instead of getting rid of the flesh wound, you are quite possibly going to die next turn. Because literally any two characters that hit you will kill you. It doesn't matter what the cards are at that point. Three injuries, no matter the kind, kill you. You're knocked out. So you need to, if there's a wound in front of you, you're likely not readying things and just getting rid of the wounds. Um, and there's a great variant in the rule book that says if you want to, you can play with the wounds where instead of just getting rid of them, you can shuffle them into your deck to have even more dead draws with your hand of three. So, and they don't have a token, so you're just a, literally a dead draw. So, yeah, this game 
has some interesting ideas. I like, you know, and they're, they're ideas we've seen in other card games of this type, like I said. You know, generally sort of living card games, collectible card games, story-driven. Um, I like some of those things. I, I, I wanted to like this game. It is just so restrictive, so on rails, incredibly punishing. Um, when things are going right, you just feel like you are doing exactly what you need to be doing. There's no wiggle room in there. There's no play. There's no fun in this one. It's missing the sauce. And mechanically, stripping that sauce away, it's still very... Um, the math uh, seems a little faulty. So, yeah, there you go. I'm not a fan of this one. I can appreciate what they were trying to do with the story-driven thing, but just not a lot of content and not a lot of fun, to be honest. So this is going to get from me a 4 out of 10. If you're a huge fan of The Phantom, I mean like huge, like a collectible, a uh, collector rather, um, then yeah, sure, I guess you would buy it anyway. But um, I can't recommend this game when, when other games of this type, all the living card games for one thing, exist that are going to be a lot more finely tuned um, and simply allow you to actually play. Even if they are punishing and you, can, you have to adjust the difficulty, they'll let you enjoy. You can mine some fun out of that. In this one, there was some laughing, but in like the bad way. So there you go. Four out of ten from me for The Phantom, the card game. Thanks everybody for checking this out with me. My name is Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one.